Hi, I'm Mark Zippick, Crocker Farm Auction. I'm here to discuss an outstanding pair of Redware figures that we'll be selling at our July 20th auction. These cat figures were made by Solomon Bell in Strasburg, Virginia, sometime between 1845 and 1880. You can see they're absolutely fantastic in, in every sense of the word. Uh, the glaze is remarkable. Both of them have this wonderful lead and manganese glaze that trickles down the body of each cat. So the potter actually sponged manganese on here first. And then dipped the cats in clear lead. And it's a highly lustrous glaze. I hope that we can get that, we can convey that in the video. But glazes like this, that have this very high lead content, this very high luster, can be found on some of the best examples of Strasbourg redware, many of which are attributed to Solomon Bell. And it's, it's a little bit different than what you would even see in Pennsylvania, just how bright this color is on these. It's really remarkable. And the glaze lays in a very appealing way. It's heavier at the back. It's lighter on the legs. You can actually see on the haunches the sponging of the manganese. It's more distinct because the lead application is lighter. With the heavier application, we have this very streaky, flowy appearance on the animal's backs. You can even get a good concept of that variation in the glaze on this particular cat. Both of these are hand modeled and they're hollow bodied and they actually rattle when they're shaken. When we think about redware animals on bases, we think, of course, of you know the Pennsylvania potting tradition, and that style, no doubt, made its way down to the Shenandoah Valley, where, according to major authorities, among them Dr. Gene Comstock, Solomon Bell proliferated this style. The form is exceptional. There's not many redware cats known. There's a handful from Pennsylvania um, and um, there is a smaller example that we sold back in uh, 2004, I believe, that was attributed to Solomon Bell. Uh, these are exceptional in their size. You can see just how big they are. And most Pennsylvania animals aren't this size. Some of them are, but generally not. And so that's one of the things that distinguishes the Bell's best work from a lot of the Pennsylvania animals is the size of their dogs and their cats. And that, that style, that, that bold, gutsy style of doing large size animals will even continue on from Solomon Bell into his nephews with, with S. Bell and Son. Of course, you have the dog with Monkey Rider, um, and you have the, uh, the wonderful multi-glazed lions uh, that are in the collection of the Renfrew Museum. The bases have wonderful stamping, very, very elaborate stamping. I'm not sure how well we can get this in the video. but profuse elliptical stamping around the border. It's actually an oval with another arched line within the oval. And Dr. Comstock does a great job of delineating these distinctive bell stamps. A lot of similar stamps were used in Pennsylvania, but there are certain distinctive stamps on these cats and other animals, and even actually 
on some vessels uh, from Strasbourg that you won't find anywhere else. That are great diagnostic tools uh, attributing, that help you attribute pieces to the Bell family. So one of those distinctive stamps is that oval. Can you get that okay? Another one is this great arched, very distinctive, arched rainbow like dental stamp above an oval. And these daisies, you may see similar daisies um, from different regions, but I believe these specific daisies are uh, characteristic of the bells and they have eight petals with circular, circular uh, shape to them. They both survive in great condition. This example in particular is in immaculate condition. So many of these redware figures are heavily damaged. This example is pristine. Yeah, we talked about the glaze. The glaze is remarkable. I mean, this piece is almost in like new condition. This example survives in very nice condition with some very old restoration of the ears. You can actually see there's some old printed paper that is involved in that filled putty-like restoration. As redware animal figures, these are remarkable. But as southern objects, they're really put over the top. You know, we have the great size. We have the fact that they're surviving as a pair, which is exceptionally rare. Um, but then we have the idea that they're uh, works of southern manufacture. Um, so when we think about southern figural redware, we can only generally think about two areas. One is the Shenandoah Valley tradition of the bells in, in Winchester and Strasburg. Um, and then we also think about Moravian redware, most of which is, is molded or slip cast. Um, and so when we think of redware folk sculpture of the South, um, these pieces are among the very best still in private hands. We think of, of course, the iconic lion that's at Mesda named Winchester that was made by Solomon Bell. Um, other than that, these cats are two of the best examples of Solomon Bell redware known. Um, and we think about other iconic animals, uh, you know, the Bacher goat that sold in the Diarly sale years ago, that's now at the American Folk Art Museum in New York City. Um, we think about all the great pieces in Renfrew or pieces in Wintertour. They uh, have been in museum collections for years. And so to have pieces like this, of this quality, that uh, are still on the open market, uh, that are still uh, available for sale is truly remarkable. These are iconic pieces and a lot of you watching this video probably have seen these pieces in publications before and have known about them for years. The first book that they are illustrated in is William Wiltshire's Folk Pottery in the Shenandoah Valley. And you can see this cat is illustrated in this very nice large plate right here. And Wiltshire's collection was uh, displayed at the Abbey Alter Rockefeller Folk Art Museum in Williamsburg, Virginia in 1975. And these cats were, were also in the exhibit uh, then. The second book that they're illustrated in is The Pottery of the Shenandoah Valley Region by H.E. Comstock. Now this is a wonderful book. Um, you can see just how dog-eared our copy is. We got this back in the 90s and I've really enjoyed reading it. If you have any interest in American pottery in general or Shenandoah Valley decorative arts, I highly recommend this book. Um, it really is a wonderful, exhaustive work, a very ambitious undertaking covering all the potters from the Shenandoah Valley region, including John Bell up in Pennsylvania. Um, these cats are discussed 
uh, in, in Comstock's section on uh, his hand-modeled uh, animal figures. And you can see that he actually has this wonderful discussion about these stamps on these cats and how they're distinctively Bell and how they can help you attribute other works to Solomon Bell or S. Bell and Son from Strasbourg. Um, there's also even a little discussion right here on the anatomy of the cats and how the hind leg uh, positioning of the cats uh, connects also to another dog attributed to Solomon Bell. Um, so this is a wonderful book. I guarantee you will learn a lot if you read it. And in my opinion, it's, it's the best book on American pottery out there. Um, these cats are a very exciting offering. Um, as I said before, pieces like this typically have been locked up in museum collections uh, for decades. And so to have pieces like this still available uh, for public sale is it, it, truly remarkable. Um, as works of Southern folk sculpture, uh, as they say in the catalog, it, it really, their, their importance really can't be overstated. And we're very excited to offer them in our July 20th auction.